And yeah. the rest of this is really, I love this design, you mm. know, it's really sort of knocked back in a way, but nice and retro and crisp. And I think that might be a bit too much. So mm. that, I think it's an excellent idea. <laughs> Today we're at the manufacturer of the DFV, the most successful Formula One engine of all time, uh, and the YB, which powered probably the most desirable bank robber cars of my generation, uh, the Sierra uh, and Escort models, which bear the name Cosworth. Already. No, 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 you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Just burst into an office. Might have some lights and turn That's where it sort of really started, pre DFV. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Taking the you know the Anglia 105E yeah. engine and um, and performance tuning. Slide that. throttles. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and and, <laughs> yeah. and uh, custom head as well. So that's one of the one of the later ones, the SCA, yeah. um, which had um, downdraft head on it as well. Yeah, yeah. So this would have been introduced in '64. That's pretty cool. And then that would have been just predating DFV development, which would have been probably '65, yes. '66. Yes. And that was interesting because originally Ford was funding the DFV, uh, and you know, with with the intention of it being used solely by Chapman yeah. in the Lotus F1 team, and then they had to have a bit of a renegotiation. Carefully approach Chapman and tell him uh, maybe we need to be able to sell it to some other teams as well. Otherwise, you're going to completely dominate all yes. the Formula yeah, One, yeah, and, yeah, and that, we're going to look that, bad that, because that be we're it. too good. Yeah. And then, of course, every British Formula One team ended up using the DFV. Yeah. But of course, most people, uh, kind of the household name Cosworth, you spring to mind is Sierra Escort Cosworth, and they were powered by the YB, which was a development in, I guess, the 80s, yep, uh, mid 80s, yep. uh, kind of in, in pursuit of touring car victory, really. I mean, it was developed, I guess, for the Sierra touring cars. Um, but then, of course, they had to do the homologation versions for touring car, and then it made sense to do a road, a road going version. And the name just shot from being it, purely that's... purely a motorsport scene yep. thing to everybody wanting a Cosworth. It was like exactly, it was like the exactly AMG that. Merc yes. or you know Alpina BMW. Yep. You got a, got a Cosworth uh, Ford, and they were relatively affordable yeah. at the time to, yeah, yeah. to sort of the the everyday person, and that's Definitely, what made yeah. them. And that's that's got real continued with Ford really. Is yeah. they, they, they do amazingly fast cars on sort of everyday everyday money, which is which is something that's interesting, and it's actually interesting that that links in a little bit with Gordon Murray because he's very keen on on kind of making things affordable for the masses as well. And certainly the Sierra Cosworth was a, was a fine machine in its day. The bank robber's car of choice, I think. It was, yes, yeah, yeah. I think it was next, next to impossible <laughs> so to get The police had to fleet up with them pretty yeah. sharpish. Yeah. And of course you can, you know, the, the, the road going one was what, 200 horsepower-ish, but there'd already been, especially the RS500 already had the bigger turbo on for the touring car, uh, sort of homologation. Yeah. So you could yeah. just wind the booster from one of them and make 400, 500 yeah. horsepower that easy. <laughs> So all of these cells down this end of the road are the, um, are the original dyno cells. So yeah. um, we've gradually ex expanded as we've gone, but so essentially all the original brickwork is here. So these yeah. are the cells that the DFE would have first fired up on, yeah, and they're yeah. still the cells now that we test engines on. It's amazing. Um, I've seen, I've actually seen some footage on YouTube, funnily enough, 
of uh, some of the people working on the DFE ah, okay. back then, and it's probably in yes, exactly yeah, yeah, that would probably be in, in yeah. one of these cells here. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you've got the, sort of, customary uh, massive glasses that yeah, really wore in the yeah. and and you know dressed as proper engineers. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, no, shirt and tie and a smock over the top. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then we, so these are the same in, same dynos that we run the um, current. Well, the most recent Formula One engine would, yeah. would, would have all been tested on this engine. So we build them in the build shop, wheel them through, and then we'd hot test them yeah, in yeah. here. And then we'd do all of the um, Giratech testing as well yeah, in these yeah. cells. It's incredible, really, to think that the, the DFVs were being tested in the same rooms that the Duratex oh, are yeah, now being tested. You know, if, if these walls could talk, yeah. uh, they'd probably say "ow" from the amount of con rods that they've had yeah, yeah. Them, all those things, and all, yeah. all the swear words yeah. they've heard, yeah. <laughs> and the late nights yeah. grafting away trying to get things for F1 deadlines oh, sorted yeah, out. Absolutely. I imagine you still yeah. have that now as some oh, yeah, nasty it's, Formula it's, One deadlines. That's it. Well, it's the thing. We, well, it's one of the big offerings that Cosworth really has is because we've always said and always worked the principle of. No point in having the best engine on Monday if the race was on Sunday. Yeah, so you know, yeah, so yeah. if anything's late, it doesn't yeah, matter, does it? it? Yeah, it's yeah. no use. Really, really, number go, gents. So, right, here we go, gents. Something that a lot of people who just see a crate Duratec and it's like you know, less than a grand to buy a crate Duratec, they probably don't appreciate the amount of work that Cosworth put into no. what a Cosworth built Duratec. Yeah. Because I'm imagining that there's maybe even more non-standard components than there are standard ones. I'm not sure. Uh, there there must be a hell possibly. Of a lot. Yeah. So essentially, what we do is we buy a Duratec engine direct from the production line from Ford. Mm -hmm. They come here. First thing we do is we strip it down. We we take it fully, fully apart. We wash everything in our um, wash room, and then we do any deburring or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. production examples don't have to be exactly perfect because you know they're reasonably yeah. crude, they're relatively yeah, low yeah. stress, they don't have to be great. Um, but what we do is we pull it all apart, we check everything's fine, um, we crack test the important yeah. stuff, um, deburr any key bits, um, and then we'll start putting it together. But before we get to the point of putting it together, we've got to have made a, a lot of bits. So, so the dry sump system on yeah. it um, is our own bespoke dry sump system. Um, it's got actually got the integrated scavenge yeah, pump, which yeah, from yeah. a um, from a packaging point of view is very nice because mm -hmm. then you haven't got to try and hang some big yeah. belts and scavenge rods. And then and also from a usage point of view, especially if you can use it in a rally environment yeah, or yeah, you don't want a belt like hanging that, out there. You don't the want to get any <laughs> you don't want to be getting any gravel yeah, trapped in yeah, that. It's, it's a great idea. I mean, we've built a couple of cars with belt driven dry sumps before, and we've always put. Uh, an oil pressure engine cut on them because yeah. you're just paranoid that yeah, yeah, belt yeah, flows. <laughs> you, you you're just too late. You're so, done. Yeah. 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 And yeah, no matter how much you spent on your engine, yeah. that's gone at that point. Um, so we then put Cosworth um, <coughs> pistons, which we manufacture in house, rods, our own specification of camshafts, valve springs. We do some machining on the head to um, get the airflow better. And then uh, we have barrel throttle system as well yeah. that we put on, um, uh, similar to the throttle systems yeah. that we looked at yeah, on the yeah, Formula yeah. One engines earlier. And presumably the big benefit of the roller barrel throttles is that there's no butterfly even when it's fully open. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. When a butterfly is fully open, you've still got something yeah. interrupting the Wide airflow, open throttle, you've got maximum airflow. Yeah, in, yeah. That's it. yeah, and you can see that from, from here. So essentially you, you will have no obstruction down to the back of those yeah, valves. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, this sort of port design is something that's phasing out a lot now, you know, with, the, with a lot more concentration going on economy. It's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, you need, you know, well, especially on you know, turbocharged, high efficiency engines, you need yeah. a different amount of tumble, you need a different yeah, amount of yeah, smurts as well. Yeah. Whereas this essentially is trying to get as much fuel and air into that combustion chamber as possible to make the power. Presumably the crank, is that just a standard forward uh, action? In the, in the specification that um, Gordon has yeah. asked for, that will just be the standard yeah, crank. Yeah. However, the, the higher specification engine that we do um, can have a billet crank in it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and Gordon was actually very particular. So because it's our, because last year was the 50th anniversary <laughs> of the Cosworth DFE, yeah, yeah. this year is our 60th anniversary. We decided yeah. we were going to do a limited edition run 
a 12 Durotex, yeah. one for each driver's championship that the DFE powered. So Gordon rang, rang up and I'm speaking to him about that and he got quite excited about that. <laughs> yeah. And he said, oh, what specification are they? And I said, oh, they're two litre, 255 brake mm. horsepower specification. He said, oh, that's not the specification I want. He'd yeah. already, he'd already yeah, looked yeah. through all of the torque yeah, curves. We, we, and he'd, look, he'd, he'd, he'd decided well. this is the torque curve <laughs> that I want. So yeah, this has is to be said, when you, when you look through the curves, the two point, because this is the 2.3, isn't it? Yes, yeah. The 2.3, it's got such a smooth. That, that long stroke yeah. really makes a difference low down, yeah. but the two litre is an absolute screamer. So, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's horses for courses. Yeah, no, it's going to be a, it's going to be quite a machine. It's nice to feel that you know that more that low down grunt. You know, yeah. it's, it's great. Yeah. And it's also nice, really, that he's specifying the car that he absolutely wants. Yeah. He's not he's yeah, not yeah. making a combination You're of down to everything. The, the, not, know, not just the details this, this of the bit, car, this bit, this but the details bit, of the engine. That as well. will that will probably be all right. But no, he's absolutely yeah, defining yeah. exactly what yeah. he wants, um, which is brilliant. But I imagine that's probably quite challenging from yeah. a, <laughs> it's for all a, around, yeah, for a yeah. vehicle build point of view. I don't know if you saw in the last video. There's a little shot of him like sitting in the car and he's like blipping an imaginary throttle. Right. <laughs> it's saying, oh, I, can't, I can hear it now. And I was thinking, I went out yesterday in an Alpha um, that we put this Millington 2.7 Millington in. It's just so talky, and you literally you just whisper the throttle, and the back end comes oh, out. Really? And I was like, oh, I can't wait oh, to drive the Tesco one. Yeah. I saw this plaque on your Instagram page the other day and it kind of brought it home to me a bit about who we're actually building this car for. Oh, absolutely. And it's just, you kind of get, you, we've kind of almost got used to it now. When, when he first approached us, we were like, oh my God, how have we got into this situation? Yeah. And then, uh, and then it's kind of now, it's just like, yeah, we're just building a car for Gordon Murray. And then I saw this and I thought, now this was his first Grand Prix victory, the first car design of his, which is only a year after he started at Brabham. Uh, and he was only 27. Yeah, it's, un it's unbelievable. So, yeah. Yeah. Not surprisingly, this date stuck in his head fairly well. That's <laughs> <laughs> why he probably That's wants it, it on this. But then, like moving on from that, I'm now thinking, well, this is commemorating probably one of the biggest moments in his life, and we're building the car it's going. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> no incredible. Pressure. No, I, 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 you know, I feel like the same thing. You know, we work with Gordon Murray Design on on different projects, and even then, when he rang me up, it was a bit like, oh, yeah, God, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be great. Cool, okay. Excellent. I think we've got everything. Yeah, nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Cheers. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, it. And, um, yeah, nice well. to meet you. I look forward to seeing the uh, yeah. finished one. And then yeah. we'll have that engine up here at some point. Too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, as, soon as, we're, as soon as we're done with that, we'll bring it back, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> How good was that? Right, we better get back to the workshop and do some work. Oh, it looks great, guys. spread to, <laughs> to go through basically <laughs> I suppose the um, best place to start is probably the dash right um, we were obviously talking before about getting these auxiliary gauges on there mm -hmm. um, and we've, we sort of touched on putting them on the top and you've probably seen in the video where I was talking about <laughs> the fact that we can't really come up with a nice way of putting them at the top part of the dash mm -hmm. it doesn't look like we've just bodged some gauges on there basically mm -hmm. And we're really keen to avoid the original because the RS models had like an extension on the side of here with the four gauges in, but it looks horrible as well. So this is kind of the idea we've come up with at the minute. It's just it's just extending down the centre section of dash oh, and, nice and, and having basically this this sort of panel, yeah. um, which will have the gauges and the heat controls and the headlight uh, switch uh, sort of laid out, just rotary controls on there. And then, and then, kind of tying in the look with the with the main gauges as well. I mean, that's the standard cluster there. Yeah. yeah not not sort of going crazy, uh, overcomplicated. No, just no, some no, nice gauges in that there. That's great. Yeah. And the warning lights just well, laid looks, out. It looks period, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 So we've kind of one of the things we talked about quite early on was doing these 
all the all the lights with with text. I know it's only a minor detail, but rather than symbols, actually having it written <laughs> written yeah, on them and that's the side with the gauges and things. Yeah, I love that sort of thing. Um, that's brilliant. Yeah, I've just thought of something. You know, just looking at these controls. I think we might have to go back to the car because you know, you know what? with the seat I, I, where it is, this, I'm, I'm sitting yeah. in where the back seat is, basically. Yeah, okay. and, uh, <laughs> yeah we'll have a, we'll have I a just want to make sure I can read because uh, yeah. I'll probably, I don't know what you think I'll, about seat belts, but well, if I had a, we, We've had this whole discussion yesterday and I was like, oh God, the heater controls, I'm not going to be able to reach them. And then I thought, well, he's not going to have harnesses on, he's going to have a normal seat belt, so you can lean forward. But maybe I'm wrong on that assumption. <laughs> we, we kind of thought yeah. you would be going with normal harnesses. Uh, yeah, normal I mean, a norm, for everyday use, it, I probably will go with the normal. The harnesses are a bit of a pain. Yeah, I've, had, are, them in, I've had them in a daily car. and it's yeah. like, To be honest, I've, in my standard Manta, I had harnesses, and I couldn't reach anything on the dash. So. No, I've got, a, I've got a lot of stuff. But, um, yeah, I suppose if I've got a normal, you just lean, lean forward, don't you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, realistically, the, the standard heater controls are there anyway. So unless we have a massive protrusion off the mm. dash, you wouldn't be able to get them or put them in the console. Or, or, or mount them in the transmission <laughs> Yeah, I was just about to say, or on the console. <laughs> but, yeah, it's... uh be going a bit away from an escort. I think as long as you're going in an inertia reel yeah. belt. I love that look, though. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's settled that one then. That was an easy one. Um, moving on from that was the materials, actually, on the seats. You were talking about this tarp. Is this basically the tartan that's it yeah that's what i thought that's the Murray tartan. so uh, yeah. i guess next decision is on the seats whether we do the whole center in the tartan or whether we just do a, a small panel in the tartan yeah actually i hadn't considered just doing one section yeah we were uh, wondering about maybe just just doing one of these panels or just as a sort of little splash i'm I th not sure i think that i think that's an excellent idea because uh, uh, as much as i love you know having the tartan in there i had a brabus smart Mm. which they did up specially for me in, in fluorescent lime green. <laughs> yeah. And that had Murray Tartan seats, the yeah. whole seat. And it is a bit it's in, a your, bit in face. your face. That's what we thought. And yeah. the rest of this is really, I love this design. Mm. You know, it's really sort of knocked back in a way, but nice and retro and crisp. And I think that might be a bit too much. So mm. I, that, I think it's an excellent idea. It's just to have a hint of it, yep. which could be the very least one of those yeah. panels. Yeah. And the most would be those three, the block of those yeah, three, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. I don't think the seams would even have to be necessarily in those same positions. No. So we could do a bigger panel. Or, or, yeah, there's, there's various. I, I there. quite like. I quite like the subtlety of just one, actually. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I've, I've, let's make that. Yeah. The decision then. Yeah. Which I think ties in quite well. We would. I mean, there's other details to talk about on the back, but. Um, this sort of bulkhead area, you wanted some of the tartan there, and we were thinking just a sort of small yeah, window again, of tartan, which yeah, kind absolutely. of ties in with that same, that would, would run all the way across. That would be perfect, yeah. absolutely perfect, yeah. I like that. The only other thing, which is a massively controversial uh, split opinion hugely, is that we were trying to think, or I was trying to think, this is more than me, uh, of a way of getting another little flash of that tartan on the dash, but in a way that didn't look horrible. And I just casually wondered about having it on the gauge faces. Um, mm. I think that's a bit OTT again. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, I think uh, that's going to make I, Dean happy. I, he <laughs> hates it. I, I quite like the, just the, 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 the look. The look yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. there is fantastic. Yeah. I think it's so period, and I think that's just a little bit like the whole seat again for me. Yeah. You know, that'll please all the YouTube Sorry followers because they, they, <laughs> they, everybody seemed to hate that, and I thought it was quite a cool idea. Just subtle, kind of dimmed down, so it wasn't like in your face. But. So the rear rear seat area, this, yeah. is, this is kind of a, a little indication of what we've talked, what Matt's talked about with the structure. So we're going to have this tube going across, which is yep. going to allow us to tie the turrets in that and put a lot of strength in. But it also, it's a nice way of transitioning the parcel shelf into the bulkhead. Mm -hmm. That's not just a square corner. As yep. I keep saying to people, it's just going to look like a boarded out transit van if we uh, <laughs> if we just have a square corner on there. So it's a nice radius. Then we can run carpet or whatever fabric we go to put on that around that corner. Just, just butting in very slightly on that bit, if you wanted any harness provision, ah, you yes. put the threaded tubes yeah, into, into that, that put tube. threaded yeah, yeah. boss tubes into that tube. I so think that's a there, good idea. You, want, yeah, you can screw idea. the eye bolts in I, if you want. I think them. that's a really yeah. good idea we'll because there, I, I might find, because I'm going to tramp on a bit in this, I'm sure, uh, <laughs> I might find the three point just doesn't feel... Yeah, I quite like being pulled back into the seat yeah, and driving yeah. quickly, you know, to a track day or something. Okay. That is a really good idea. That's yeah, a we, could just, we could just have threaded bosses that excellent you can't even idea. see, and you can yeah. just screw the eye bolts yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. perfect, yeah, perfect. Gear knob. Gear knob. 
Uh, alloy leather, any preference on? Because I know some people don't like those ice cold alloy gear knobs in the no. um, um But then it would look nice and in keeping with all the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It black anodized and engraved through like the dash. It, it want, it's yeah, going to say it wants to be in everywhere. keeping and it wants to be. No, he's doing a wood one because we don't have wood anywhere else in no, the car. No, no. I mean, um, the, the obvious in keeping thing would be kind of knurled with a, a engraved through numbers on the top of mm. it. Uh, black anodized aluminium. I um, think this sort of thing is too modern. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needs to be. It needs to look like it came out of the 60s, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it definitely <laughs> needs to tie up with these. Yeah. yeah. And to be honest, so if I, it's raked back a lot, it's probably going to need to be round. Or ish, more that's, or less round. That's yeah. true. very true, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Point. and it's going to be right back. Yeah. If yeah, if the gear lever is that yeah. long yeah. and it's that far back, it's going to yeah. come back at 35, 40 degrees. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It Maybe we just go with a classic yeah. black ball like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can't go wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's very 60s, yeah. Yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Yeah. I think that works well with the crank stick, like you say as well. Mm -hmm. uh, steering wheel is probably the next thing, and I have to say I absolutely love. <laughs> but you probably won't. <laughs> Momo have yeah, just brought that out, which I think looks amazing <laughs> and, and really in keeping. So, which means everybody else won't. <laughs> it's perhaps not quite as vintage. No, that's looking, nice. But it's, no, I like that. It looks quite sexy. And the other thing I like about it is it's. Um, I don't like in a classic car that where the rim's too thick, mm. and that looks like it's got a thin rim. Yeah. Yeah. Because nothing we'll spoils a classic car more than yeah. a modern, Fast really thick yeah, yeah, yeah. rim. It just doesn't <laughs> look right, you know, because the old cars. I mean, the Elan must be 20 mil or something. I mean, yeah. it's tiny, yeah, thin, yeah. you know, it's really. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that, that looks great. Well, and it's a black, it's a black and silver thing. again. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll yeah. sort yeah. out the badge. Great. We're making great progress here. Uh, that's that, so is that everything interior wise? I think it is. Exterior, um, and there's, yeah, as we've kind of discussed before, <coughs> the, the escort's so sort of minimal, there's not a lot you can change. Mm -hmm. We've obviously. Uh, well, we don't want to change it. We don't lot, want to do change a lot, no. no. The only thing you'd mentioned before is wanting to throw a few ideas around on the rear end. Yeah. Um, so Dean's just done a couple of drawings on the idea of quarter bumpers rather than having the full bumper. Yeah, because I was talking um, about trying to incorporate slots somewhere, yeah, wasn't yeah, I? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, that's a tricky one. I, Actually, having them serve any purpose is also difficult because the, because the seam where the boot—I mean, it's all doable. We can change the metalwork around, but the seam where the boot floor meets the rear valance is basically directly behind that bit there. Mm -hmm. So, if you had vents there, they've either got to be just underneath the boot floor or just inside the boot. Yeah, I mean, last time Not we good. talked about it, this—I I was actually 50-50. Yeah. I just wanted one other subtle body mod mm -hmm. that wasn't su super obvious because I really want the thing to look like a twin mm -hmm. cam. Um, and the thing that took me away from that was the fact that one of the nice things about the Escort is that long straight line mm. makes mm. it look wider. Mm. Yeah. And if you break that line, it doesn't look quite mm. so yeah. wide. Yeah. And one of the other things we talked about was maybe a portion of this gets blacked out. Mm. Mm. Or maybe you put the slots in that, whether that's too low or not, I don't know. I quite like the idea of potentially blacking some of this out because mm. that would mm. make it look thinner. And, yes, and makes it look wider. Yeah. Oh, well, the other thing is the exhaust. Yes. Where does the standard one come out? This little the bump here. The standard one comes out this side, but actually mm. it's got to be that side really. Well, it hasn't got mm -hmm. to be, but that's the side that the manifold comes out on the engine. And actually, it was that side in the twin cam for the same reason. Mm -hmm. It was on the twin cam the exhaust came out. Because that's the one thing I quite like asymmetric stuff on cars. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> so one thing I wouldn't mind, whether this is blacked out or not, is an artificially big chunk out of the rear skirt mm -hmm. so, with the exhaust, yeah, so rather than hanging yeah. out the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I quite like it's a deliberate chunk out of that, and and the exhaust a bit higher up. No, we have done it. Stu's done that already, and he has taken a, a reasonable chunk out. Done, yeah, we probably jumped the gun about that. He came to me and said, "How big is the exhaust going to be, uh, so I can do an appropriate size cutout?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I said uh, it was going to be two and a half inch yeah. uh, pipe. Yeah. So he's done, I think, a 
semi-circle three-inch cutout. Yeah. So it would be a two and a half inch pipe, half half tucked into the valance, half below. Okay. Um, okay. So that's how it stands at the moment. Okay. But obviously well, we can change it further. But no, it's, it's less subtle than that at the minute. One no, I think a semicircle will be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One very, very tiny detail we did for, for this one is move the escort badge over to this side to kind of balance out the uh, the details. But uh, I mean, <coughs> that's, uh, that's something we can decide. Uh, I think I think if the pipes there, the escort definitely yeah. needs yeah. to be yeah. that yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a go around that one then. Uh, that's about it, isn't it? That's been yeah. remarkably successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of ticks. Yeah, yeah. tick, 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 yeah. done. Excellent. Well, I think that's everything we need to talk about. Good. Great. <laughs> it's Excellent. A, it's unusual well for decisions to be made that easily. <laughs> Great stuff. Right. right. Let's go. Relatively yeah. simple car. Which is so This has actually got one megawatt capability. Mega, not a gigawatt. <laughs> gigawatt. <laughs> one point twenty-one gigawatts. What's that? Uh, uh, back to the Future. Yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just only one. No, this is real stuff. Yeah. <laughs>